I'm hoping that having watched the first three videos, you are get, starting to get the idea that the idea is to gradually take control of this bad situation that we find ourselves in um, incrementally. Uh, I have yet to come across any quick fix for any of it or any magic pill, pill or special oil drops you drop in your ear or special device. Uh, I just haven't seen it. Um, and it's almost like the people who are offering these quick fixes are preying on the desperation of people in crisis mode, meaning that when it first hits you, uh, it's really common to thrash around and try to find a solution for it. Um, in my case, I was told that it would go away. Um, I said I had a, 80, a chance of getting 85% of my hearing back. That turned into 65% of the hearing, which turned into, you know, again, uh, just not interested in me anymore because I wasn't making the progress they had assumed I was going to make. So now single sided deafness, the other two, uh, I was able to give some advice and tips of things that I've used and to help me get a handle on this situation, um, to gain a little bit of control. And I find that the success comes in gaining incremental control. There's no quick fix. It doesn't come real fast. But these little things, they add up, and time goes by uh, whether you're working on it or not. And if you're working on it, as time goes by, you get more of a handle of it, on it. And as you feel more control over these bizarro situations <laughs> that suddenly, uh, uh, I'm speaking for myself, bizarro situations that I suddenly find myself thrust in, it helps the habituation. As I gain a little bit of control here and there, it helps the uh, getting used to it. I'm going to do a whole separate section on habituation, but it mainly means uh, making it part of your life and learning how to negotiate the new situation that you found yourself in. So um, I'm hoping that these videos are helpful. I'm open for comment under them. I'm hoping that other people will watch this and say, oh, I have an idea. I know that this helped me or that helped me. Um, so feel free to make comments. But here we go with single-sided deafness. So single-sided deafness is just that. And in my case, it hit me like a, getting hit in the face with a refrigerator. <laughs> it just happened suddenly. Uh, May 30th, 2017, 12.30, everything was fine. At 12.35, everything changed. And it was that fast. And I've gone almost totally deaf in my left ear. So it's been quite a shift from you have to live in one way for your whole life, been successful at it, and being forced to learn to live in another way. And that's why I'm hoping these videos, through my battle with this, I'm hoping that I'm able to impart some information that will help you. And what I'm finding, and what you may find, is taking a little control will make you feel a lot better. And incremental control adds up to a lot of control. And as you get more control, there's less desperation, less frustration, and the habituation of the situation can take more effect for you. Um, I'm doing a whole separate section on habituation, but just a little side note, a little story is when I was building my business as an instrument builder, I went through many years without any money. I mean, living on peanut butter, circling the grocery store with uh, 25 bucks in my pocket, getting as much food as I could get for 25 bucks because I hadn't been paid yet for the next wave of guitars or the next, the work that I'd done waiting for the people to show up and pay me. So there's a lot of lean time happening then. And every now and then someone would come in and pay cash. And I'd walk around with 20 bucks in my pocket and I would feel like a million bucks, even though the bigger picture wasn't bright. It, it got better over time, but at first it was, it, was, it was challenging. It was the love I had for my work is what helped me to hang on. The point is 20 bucks in my pocket made me feel a lot better. Getting a little control over the tinnitus, getting a little control over the hyperacusis, it will help you, it certainly has helped me feel a lot better. I think it can help you feel a lot better. Okay, enough of the pep talk. Single-sided deafness. When I first went to the audiologist, they, they were giving ideas of things that you could do, you know, two hearing aids or the Baja system. And the analogy that more than one of them use, to the point that makes me think this is the blanket thing that they're trained, is that if you're in the grocery store and the, the uh, checkout person asks you if you want paper or plastic bags, you don't have to turn your head and go, what? You'll be able to hear. You'll be able to pick up that signal. Or a grandkid comes up to you and says something. You don't have to go, hang on, sweetie, and turn your head to, the, to your good ear. You get a stereo effect. 
He didn't like that. <laughs> it's much more than that. Um, single sided deafness, in my experience, and I'm hoping that yours isn't this bad, but if it is, maybe you'll find a little comfort in the fact that you're not alone. And maybe if you know someone who does have single sided deafness, you'll get a better understanding of it. So, single sided deafness for me is not a stereo effect, it's a layering effect that's lost. You don't lose the stereo effect, you lose the layering, the depth effect, and the triangulation capacity. Meaning, if you drop, drop a, a, a screwdriver, in my case a screwdriver or a chisel, if I don't keep my eye on it, it'll take me a lot longer to find it because I have no idea which direction it went. And I'm the guy walking around the house looking for the phone that's ringing that's in my back pocket. And if I don't put the phone in a certain place every time I'm through with it, I'll, it'll be really hard for me to find it, almost impossible. So uh, a triangulation of sound is, is uh, a real problem. The other thing as a musician, and I've got a music section coming too, but as a musician, uh, tone was lost. And I found that very interesting. I've always had good relative pitch um, and uh, uh, been able to tune the guitar without using a tuner and being right on. I've been able to hit the harmony. I don't have a great voice, but I, I sing in tune and I, 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 I can uh, harmonize well. And I've always enjoyed it all the way back to high school and choir days. And, it was all gone. As soon as I lost, lost hearing on one side, I couldn't believe how badly out of tune I was singing and how I could not tune. I'd be playing the guitar and thinking it was in tune, record it, play it back. It was so awful. I, couldn't, I didn't know that I wasn't in tune. So th there's a certain tone capacity that's lost. But the big deal is <laughs> instead of having individual sounds, you get a blanket of sounds, meaning clock ticking, my tinnitus, my voice, creaking of the chair, door opening, car beeping, people talking in the next room, it all comes together. It's not like clock ticking, person talking, uh, creaking of the chair, car out in the street, uh-uh. It all becomes a mass of sound that comes at the same time. That's a problem for hearing. You Obviously, single-sided deafness is a problem with hearing. <laughs> But that's that's the uh, uh, that's really it because you have all the sound coming. It's hard to pinpoint the sound you're trying to hear, and that's something that has been uh, challenging to get a handle on. And it's been hard to do, uh, train isn't the right word. It's been hard to uh, accustom my friends and family members to this situation because I look the same. Everything seems fine. I'm still jovial, still telling little jokes. I can talk. They can hear me but I can't hear them in a bad situation. And learning how to, to uh, work in a social situation with single-sided deafness has been a challenge. So much of a challenge is I'm doing another section on just that. So when I go to the audiologist and explain my situation, they say, oh, well, you have the evil trifecta. Uh, Tenses, hyperacusis, single-sided deafness. Apparently, it's a combination. They see enough to have a clever little name for it. Uh, what I can tell you is they all are connected to a point that's hard to tell when one starts and one stops. You know, that it's a fluid thing. I'm just putting them into segments to explain how I've been battling it. Um, it'd be too big of a topic to try to take it all on at one time. Um, so th that, that's my point on it. But uh, let's start with a single-sided deafness and tinnitus. It makes it worse and it makes it better. It makes it worse because the tinnitus never goes away. I have tinnitus in my right ear, which is my good ear, and tinnitus in my deaf ear. And it's almost completely deaf. So what happens with the tinnitus in the right ear, for as far as I'm concerned, a lot of the time it's not even there. Uh, um, because it's getting filtered by regular sounds in life. So it, the, the sound of the tinnitus gets diluted. In the left ear, there's nothing to dilute the sound, and it's there constantly. Um, the whole objective with the uh, part one, part two, and part three is to avoid the spiking because the spiking is awful. I mean, it's the baseline is something that you get used to. That's the good news. Now, hyperacusis and single sided deafness, uh, it makes it worse. It's almost like that magna light. It's, it's, uh, uh, if you have just one ear and you're only able to hear out of that one ear, the sound that you're hearing is quite intense and focused 
And when you go through some of these uh, these list of questions that people ask you, can you hear things other people can't hear? Yeah, you kind of can because it's like magnifying glass on sound. The sound that you can hear is being magnified. Um, so that certainly makes the hyperacusis worse. I really think the hyperacusis is, is directly connected. I mean, it's all connected, but I think there's a direct correlation between single-sided deafness and hyperacusis because uh, hyperacusis is you're so sensitive to these sounds that no one else even notices. I really think it's that magna light uh, analogy again to the sound. You know how magna light you shine it? There's like a little bitty pinpoint. The, the light goes like this, but it's really bright as opposed to those old style uh, flashlights we used to use. That's the way, that's what happens with the uh, uh, single side deafness in the ear that you have. The sound gets condensed down, becomes, I guess, compressed would be a good way to think about it. Um, making things, not only can you hear things that other people seem to not pay attention to, or at least they don't notice these things, that it, it creates that hyperacusis. So how do we deal with this? It seems the best way for me, the way that I've dealt with it, is learning how to navigate my world differently. And that has been more than a little challenge. Um, when you've been doing, going through life in, in a certain way and it's been successful, and suddenly you have to shift and behave differently and, and, and avoid situations you haven't had to avoid before. Um, it's not only hard for you, it's hard for the people around you. People who know you look fine, still happy, jovial, you know, not in the corner crying or anything. It's just, um, so they forget immediately. Uh, and it, it's, it's such a challenge. I'm doing a whole separate section on the social battle. Uh, but that's what I found in terms of dealing with single-sided deafness. The best remedy is changing and learning how to negotiate uh, situations and, and life differently. So something that can help, that I'm hoping is going to help, and maybe it's here for you already, is technology. Um, two hearing aids is something people mention all the time, where one is a transmitter and one's a receiver, so it gives you that stereo effect. Again, for me, it's not so important if I can hear it, I won't pay for plastic bags. It's the, it's the flatness of the sound. And I am told that it becomes much more manageable, um, especially with that Baja system. I've had two friends, uh, both musicians, say that it has made a big difference for them. And as I mentioned earlier, presently, I'm not a candidate for it. it the, the little trial thing didn't work for me. I have a unique situation I'm battling. But perhaps it's there for you. And, and I think that by helping mm, diminish the single side of deafness, it could help everything could get better. So I'm still hoping for technology for me. There's some other things out there that have been very interesting. In Europe, they have a peel and stick. It's a little disc type of Baja. Instead of putting the pin into your skull and with the... With the uh, uh, you know, a little speaker and all that. There's a peel and stick that sticks back there, and I guess it stays on for two weeks or so. And uh, it got approved by the FDA for U.S. use, but I haven't seen it show itself, so I don't know what's happened to it. Uh, and they certainly sing a good song about it, saying how great it is. But another thing I saw uh, a couple of years ago on TV, which is a special, I thought, now this sounds interesting. This is thinking outside of the box. <laughs> they had a little. Uh, uh, receiver that clipped on your back teeth, not on top of the teeth, but clipped on the side of the teeth, and you could easily put it in and out yourself. And a uh, transmitter from, I guess it would be this side. So things, I, I, don't, I only saw it once, but it has a, it picks up a signal, sends the signal to your teeth, and because of the bone conductivity, gives you the sense of stereo. And I can, they were talking about how great that was, but it didn't go anywhere. But the point is. Think about our iPhones, how, how much we can do with our iPhones today compared to five years ago. Well, that technology it, it can apply to this as well. So that's what I'm hoping for. The technology will uh, help. Um, in the meantime, what's working for me is navigating the world differently. Now, there are a few good things about single-sided deafness. I find that uh, sleep, if I'm in a noisy room, I sleep with my good ear against the pillow, and the bad ear out, just doing this right now, suddenly it's like <laughs> it's like having earplugs in. I mean, it can really cut down the sound and get to sleep. The other thing is, is someone saying something I don't agree with, and just just foolishness. Uh huh. It suddenly goes away. And also, uh, being serious for a minute, the the single sided deafness 
has been a real challenge with the music. And as I said, I'm doing a separate section on music uh, with all this. But it's made me sharpen up since I can't hear the tone. I've had to retrain myself. I can't hear the pitch. I've had to retrain myself how I listen for pitch. I made my guitar playing has become much simpler. Before, I would play the good sing so that I could play the guitar. This whole purpose of singing was to give me a platform for playing. Now, I play the guitar to support the singing. So the guitar playing is much simpler. The music's much simpler. And in a lot of ways, it's better. So, I mean, it's, it's not all bad. But I do have one little tip. And this buys me about an hour of pleasant comfort every day. Um, I've gotten into playing video games. This is the first time in my life I've gotten into it. And I can understand why the kids get locked on this and don't ever come out of the basement. <laughs> it's neat. I limit myself to an hour a day. Um, I like to play this game called 8-Ball. And I happen to be pretty good at it. I'm moving up in the ranks and scoring fairly high. It's neat because I play one game from... You'll be, I'll be playing somebody in Saudi Arabia and the next game I'll be playing for somebody in Indonesia and the next game it'll be somebody in Canada or, or the United States. Or It's very it's, it's, it's a fun fun thing to do. But I'll, I'll be playing this game and on the same device I'm playing it on, I go, I'll go uh, i listen to uh, uh, Relax Melodies, remember that app I told you about, or some acoustic guitar music uh, or whatever it is that, that I feel like listening to or whatever you, ever you feel like listening to. <laughs> You go to the auto, the uh, uh, the control uh, part of the device, which is that little cog wheel, and find the the uh, sound part of that. And many of them have like a balance control, a little slide pop for the balance control. If yours doesn't, I would investigate it because what I do, but since I'm mostly deaf in my left ear, I'll take that slant sound, the slide pop, and slide it over. So it's 80. Uh, I did it backwards with the, the video. <laughs> I'll slide it over. So it's like 80% I'm getting into the bad ear and 20% into the good ear. So that helps bring the, so I get the illusion of being able to hear. Uh, it certainly balances it out, the tinnitus quiets down, and I, I'm listening to this while I'm playing a little game and enjoying myself. And I look forward to it every day. So that might be something that could buy you a little peace, a little relief. So that is single-sided deafness uh, as I see it and how it plays in with hyperacusis and tinnitus. Um, I'm hoping that this information that I'm sharing is being helpful, and if it is, please like and subscribe.